Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We will chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. सहनो भुनत्तु सहवीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विनावदी तमस्तुमावित विशावहै ओम शांति 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 Gently open your eyes. We will chant from verses 11 to 15 of chapter 3. Devan Bhavayatanena Devan Bhavayata Nena Te Deva Bhavayantu Vaha Te Deva Bhavayantu Vaha Parasparam Bhavayantaha Parasparam Bhavayantaha Shreya Paramavapsyatha Shreya Paramavapsyatha Ishtan bhogan hi vo devaha Ishtan bhogan hi vo devaha Dasyante yagnya bhavita Dasyante yagnya bhavita Taidatana pradayai bhyaha Taidatana pradayai bhyaha Yo bhunte ste na eva saha Yo bhunte ste na eva saha Yagnya shishta shina santaha Yagnya shishta shina santaha Muchyante sarva kilbishaihi Muchyante sarva kilbishaihi Bhunjate te twagham papaha Bhunjate te twagham papaha Ye pachantyatma karanat Ye pachantyatma karanat Annad bhavanti bhutani Annad bhavanti bhutani Parjanyadanna sambhavaha 
पर्जन्यादन्नसंभवः पर्जन्यः यज्ञात् कर्मसमुद्भवः कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भव विद्धि कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भव विद्धि ब्रह्माक्षरसमुद्भव ब्रह्माक्षरसमुद्भव तस्मागत ब्रह्म तस्मागत ब्रह्म नित्यम यज्ञे प्रतिष्ठि नित्यम यज्ञे प्रतिष्ठि हरिओं एंड वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू we are in verse number 11 last week we saw what is the deeper significance of this word avapsyatha so the entire sadhana is to separate the mit the material equipments that is the body the pranas the emotions the thoughts from your real self when they both are united that is called the jivatma the real self or the higher self is infinite in nature called the paramatma but when the material equipments and the self unite as it were then it becomes a combination and that is what is called as jivatma the individual self the individuality is created when the individuality is created your consciousness or your identification is not with a higher self it gets conditioned by the material equipments it gets conditioned by the body it gets conditioned by the pranas it gets conditioned by the emotions and it gets conditioned by the thoughts so if i were to ask you who are you you will give me your name but then if i were to ask you what does that mean i don't mean the word meaning of the name what is it referring to you say i am mr or miss or mrs so and so now who are you referring to now you will say i am referring to me but if i were to probe further and ask you what do you exactly mean by me what are you referring to you will say i am referring to this body the pranas the emotions thoughts because if you take away all these supposing i were to ask you to just visualize that your body is taken off your pranas are taken off your emotions are taken off your thoughts are taken off now immediately you will say i will cease to exist your identification is so strong that you are not able to conceive of uh, conceive yourself without these material equipments that is the maya or illusion 
So, avapsyata, I told you, you know, last week, avap is a mathematical word. It means quotient, obtained in the process of division. So, when you divide your personality through sadhana, for example, when you do yoga sankirtan sadhana on a daily basis, what will happen? Slowly, you will be able to see yourself apart from the physical body. That will be the starting point. Then you will start to see yourself apart from your pranas. That is the next level of growth. Then you will be able to see yourself apart from emotions. Within that itself, there will be a gradation. First gross emotions, then subtler and subtler emotions. That's how you progress. And then you will be able to stand apart and see yourself as different from your thoughts. And when you go to the root of those thoughts, if I am not the thought, then who am I? The moment you start feeling that, you start experiencing that, not merely intellectualize there, the uh, question, who am I, is a very deep question. It's an experiential question. Experiential question means the answer has to be experiential, not intellectual there. Ramana Maharishi used to tell people that always question yourself, who am I? He, he said, don't focus on the object of experience, but focus on the subject, which is you. Now again, people started intellectualizing that. Oh, who am I? Okay, this is the answer. You are not the body. You are not. It's not like that. It's a very deep form of meditation where you start penetrating within yourself. You penetrate your material equipments. That is the process of avapsyata. You go on penetrating. You go on uh, with your sadhana. And that automatically starts dividing your material equipments from your higher self. That's why he has used the word avap, which is a which is a beautiful word. It's a very apt word here. So you obtain, see avapsyata also means obtain. So you obtain the infinite as it were, you obtain your higher self as it were. Why I am saying as it were is because actually the infinite is, uh, is not uh, subject to any conditioning or division or nothing. But that is only at the highest level. So you obtain the highest experience, you obtain the higher self through the process of avapsyata, which is division. And how do you divide what causes this division? It is only that penetration, that inner penetration. So, all the sadhanas which our masters have given us are all aimed towards wading through our material layers so that that process of division starts happening. Your consciousness which is so picked on to the material equipment starts withdrawing. A person who does the yoga sankirtan sadhana on a daily basis, now after a while he or she will start experiencing this. See the other benefits like uh, material benefits, if you have some relationship issues, that will get solved. 
if you have some financial issues that will get solved if you uh, have some issues in your career now that will get solved you'll progress now all that is there but the real purpose of doing yoga sankirtan is not merely all these these are all fine as long as they help you to complete your experiences so that you can start focusing on the higher so when you do the yoga sankirtan sadhana all these benefits will come to you but the real real benefit which will come to you is this avapsyata the process of division will start happening the divine division dividing the material equipments and segregating the higher self how does this happen by the process of inner penetration the meditation is nothing but just moving your consciousness within yourself meditation is not doing something but it is just withdrawing your consciousness deeper and deeper within you it is actually the process of unwinding and yoga sankirtan is so conducive the especially for you all since the audio materials have been made and given to you the sadhana materials now you can use them so effectively just play those materials and close your eyes and don't look for results now when is this division going to happen when is it no need to get into a state of anxiety then you will come out of the meditative state in a relaxed way in a very liberal way without being result oriented if you do the sadhana then the avapsyata will happen you shall obtain what shreya you shall shreya means i told you no good better and best whatever is good for you you will get in the world and uh in the uh, in your spirituality mm-hmm. and then that will go on bettering and finally you will get the highest experience of god realization so it's a very powerful uh, principle which he has ended here shreya param avapsyata so param shreya avapsyata and uh, the fact that he is telling you he is talking about this to you means you have a potential to achieve it see if we feel a person cannot achieve something we will not waste our time talking to that person sometimes when the guru is a little harsh with um his student now if the student lacks the depth he or she will only misunderstand oh why is my guru being harsh to me <laughs> that itself is the ego which is making a student feel like that a true guru is neither harsh nor soft and all that you cannot really uh, classify a master like that he just responds to the situation whatever is good for the student he will do that sometimes it may be very pleasant externally sometimes it may be a little harsh but if you understand the deeper significance you will neither get swayed or get too elated when the manifestation is pleasant nor will you uh become depressed when the manifestation uh, is a little harsh 
so as a sadhak your focus should be on this only avapsyata i need to obtain the highest experience so anything else which i gather along the way i am doing it only because it's helping me to reach the infinite otherwise i have nothing to do with that that should be the level of your focus so a master helps you to go within to penetrate and go through this experience of division actually he triggers that principle of division so that the quotient is experienced by you the quotient is avap here in this context that is the higher self so as i told you sometimes he may be very sweet externally that is what that student may require at that point of time sometimes he may ignore a student but a true sadhak a true student will never ever get affected by all that because the moment you get affected it means you are judging the guru if a student is fully focused this is what my goal is ultimate goal is and when he or she surrenders to the master thereafter there is there are no questions raised regarding the motives because the ego will keep on prompting see the 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 opposite of this that is what prevents you from penetrating what prevents you from looking within what distracts you is nothing but your ego your ego will want your consciousness to get united with something uh which is finite so when you try to do the sadhana when you try to uh go through this process of avapsyata now the ego gets frightened it gets threatened actually therefore it will try various ways by which it can get you attached to something finite and when the ego sees that oh whenever this person goes to the master now the process of penetration starts happening therefore let me put the spanner in the works let me try to create a block so it will make the mind judge the master himself oh my master is talking to everybody else he is not talking to me again the ego has taken over what is this talking not talking and all this um see a guru comes to your life comes into your life to uplift you not to cater to your whims and fancies not to keep pampering you please understand this he is way beyond all this so you should always strive to rise above these limitations the moment these kinds of uh, thoughts these kinds of emotions start coming do the sadhana and release all of them understand it's all the play of ego which is not allowing you to surrender which is not allowing you to be peaceful you know a true student becomes very peaceful because he or she is always in communion with the guru shakti wherever that person is all he has to do is just get connected that's all so where is the question of complaining the complaint comes from the ego so all the time you are you, are, uh, you know you are complaining about somebody or other in the world you complain about your 
parents, you complain about your friends, you complain about your spouse, you complain about your children. And then when your child gets married, you complain about the child's partner. See, constantly the complaining nature is there. Finally, when you go to a guru, you start complaining about the guru also. <laughs> this is how the ego functions. And not only that, it will not stop there. You will complain about God also. There are many people who say that, you know, I don't know what uh, I have done. I have never done anything wrong. But why is God punishing me? Some people are very angry with God. There is no end to this. You will have to curb it whenever it comes. Not by suppressing, but by releasing releasing it. So understand that these are all blocks in your sadhana which you will face. So avapsyata is such a beautiful principle and the entire sadhana of yajna is derived or can be easily derived from this word avapsyata. Because avapsyata gives you the method which is the division. It also gives you the final goal that is to obtain the highest. So from this moment onwards become extremely focused. You have taken this human birth to experience the highest. That is your goal. You go to a guru only for that. As I told you, the other benefits which you receive are all there. They are all fringe benefits. That also you receive the worldly wisdom, how to deal with the world, how to deal with people, everything the Guru will teach, but his real focus is on taking you towards that infinite consciousness. Actually, there is nowhere to be taken. Your consciousness is already infinite. <clears throat> but today it is bound by the finite equipment, which is actually an illusion. The yogis call it as maya, because how can the infinite be bound by the finite? But that is what is maya. And when it is bound, all this process is required, the sadhana, the guidance, And whenever you are trying to take guidance, you are trying to absorb the higher energy from the Guru, again the ego will come and create all sorts of confusions in the mind. So that, you know, its, it's goal is that it should prevent you from receiving the higher energy. So just imagine, you go all the way to meet your Guru, and then all you are thinking about is, oh, he is talking to that person more. He is praising that person, but he is neglecting me. <laughs> Supposing you say that. What a waste of time and effort. What a great opportunity to just receive the higher energy and go. Instead of that, all these confusions, these tricks start happening in the mind. So that is why avapsyata is a magnificent principle. It is. It hits you directly. A guru always focuses on triggering this process of division within a student. The, the spiritual division we are talking of. So that the consciousness which is stuck with the material equipments starts getting freed and it gets united with the higher self. And that process of union with the higher self is technically called as yoga. 
Yoga is derived from the from its root yuj. Yuj means to unite. What is the union? The union of your limited consciousness with the infinite consciousness. When that happens, you are in the state of yoga. Most people think yoga means the physical exercises. That is asanas. That is not yoga. That is an aspect of yoga to keep your body healthy and all that. But the real yoga is when this union happens. And who is a yogi? A yogi is one who has united his individual consciousness with the infinite consciousness. That person alone is called a yogi. In the coming chapters, Krishna will be emphatically stating this. Yogi bhava Arjuna, he will say. Be a yogi, Arjuna. Means, be in that state of union with the infinite consciousness. The general concept of a yogi is so, so different nowadays. Actually, all this wisdom has got lost. Everyone is saying one one thing, you know. Some people think, oh, he is a great yogi. Why? Because he is able to fast for 10 days continuously. Just because, per se, that doesn't make a person a yogi. Oh, he is a yogi. Why? Because he is able to do a very difficult posture, he is able to do it. This person is a yogi. Why? Because he has studied the scripture. Yogi is one who has united the individual consciousness with the infinite consciousness. Okay? So with that, we will now go into verse number 12. Ishtan bhogan hi vo devaha. Ishtan bhogan hi vo devaha. Dasyante yagnya bhavitaha. Dasyante yagnya bhavitaha. Taidatana pradayai bhyaha. Taidatana pradayai bhyaha. Yo bhunte ste na eva saha. Yo bhunte ste na eva saha. Ishtan bhogan. Ishtan bhogan means desired enjoyments. Ishtan means those that were desired by you. Bhogan means enjoyments. If you remember, in the earlier verses, what was the word which you, he used? He said, Ishta Kama Dhuk. When he introduced the principle of Yajna, he said, May this be your Ishta Kama Dhuk, the desired. The, the, the desires which you fix based on your will. That is what was Ishtakama. Now, he is continuing from that and he says, Ishtan Bhogan. He starts off with that. Your desired enjoyments. Ishtan Bhogan. He, he means indeed, Vo Devaha. Vo Devaha means Vaha. Devaha. Dasyante. Dasyante means will give. So, the gods will give you the desired enjoyments. Whatever it is that was desired by you, all those enjoyments will be given to you. Ishtan bhogan hi vo devaha dasyante yagnya bhavitaha. 
नरिष्ट बाई यज्ञ नरिष्ट बाई सैक्रिफाइस दिस इज द फर्स्ट लाइन आई एम जस्ट स्प्लिटिंग द वर्ड्स एंड गिविंग यू द वर्ड मीनिंग एंड देन वी विल ऑल्सो सी द फुल ट्रांसलेशन एंड जस्ट सींग द ट्रांसलेशन इट सेल्फ विल गिव यू अ फील ऑफ दिस वर्स दैट्स दैट्स वॉट वी यूजली डू in the yogic approach we first see what it literally means and whatever energy you can gather from that you gather and then part by part we start going into the depth this will ensure that you get maximum benefits so ishtan bhogan hi vah devah dasyante yagnya bhavita yagnya bhavita means do we saw all that see this line is uh, quite simple for you to understand now it will make a lot of sense because we covered all these principles in depth in the previous verse so he is again giving it here so that you know before he goes into the next line of thought this will fun- work as a summary it will get you it will help you to get further established in these principles so yagnya bhavitah means nourished by sacrifice the gods will give you ishtan bhogan the desired enjoyments and then in the second line he continues तैर्दत्ता प्रदाभ्यो तै दत्ता मीन दैट विच इज गिवन बाय दम बाय हूम बाय द गॉड्स नो हिज इज वी आई एल रीड द होल सेंटेंस एंड देन वील ट्रांसलेट यू नो युंक्ते स्तेन एव सह दैट पर्सन bhungte means one who enjoys that person who enjoys what is given by them taihi dattan means that which was given by them yaha yaha means who or it may be that person bhungte who enjoys all that no tair dattan apradaya is is apradaya means without giving anything in return means one who is uh, an extremely selfish person who just simply takes but he does not give anything such a person what is he called stena eva sah that person is indeed a stena stena means thief just <laughs> see he is using a very strong word here the reason why he is using such a strong word is because this is such a dangerous attitude and when a person gets into this kind of attitude he will destroy he or she will destroy oneself destroy other, you know cause problems around them also and neither, neither will they get anything here nor will they be able to develop spiritually in every sense of the term they will cause destruction and they will devolve that is why he is using such a strong word stena see if somebody were to come and tell um uh, you know somebody were to come to a person go to a person and tell him or her you are a stena you are a thief now immediately uh, that will hurt the ego he is deliberately hurting the ego see the ego tries to pull you away now he is hurting the ego here so that you uh, you know uh, you will stop um ala you, you will stop the mind from running into this kind of attitude because once the mind gets into this kind of attitude 
even a guru cannot do anything god god also cannot do he just has to wait because that that will get you into a cycle you will have to go through that cycle and come back that's why he is using a very strong word he is actually hurting the ego so that that itself acts as a deterrent it prevents you from going in the wrong direction see this is an amazing principle this is what we call as converting a weakness into a strength all along we say we always say no ego is dangerous ego is a block now here he is using the same ego to uh, uh, prevent the mind from going in the wrong direction so that's why he says stena eva sah that person is called a thief so nourished by sacrifice the gods will give you the desired enjoyments one who enjoys what is given by them without offering anything in return means one who takes but does not give we'll be seeing that principle of give and take in a little in a more deeper dear dear in a more deep way we have already seen that in the previous verses we'll go into more depth because that's what this verse and next verse are uh, going to explain further so he keeps on taking but not giving so one who enjoys what is given by them without offering anything in return is indeed a thief see whom would you generally call a thief a person who tries to take away something from another person that is that which belongs to another person he takes it away and he doesn't give back anything in return such a person is called a thief so when it comes to big big robbery and all that we can understand oh, that person has robbed a bank he is a robber he is a thief we say this person you know he did uh, he is a uh, he, uh, he took away that person's money ha huh? is a thief we say that but here he is giving a different uh, definition that is further uh, depth to that word he is not saying it is not enough if you stop stealing outwardly in life if you generally take and if you don't contribute he says you are a thief See, he is raising the standard he is raising the bar so that you you start following the higher principles of life it is not enough if you say i have avoided all these negative things no you have to contribute you have to do the positive things also so that is why in our scriptures they talk of two things one is pravritti and the other is nivritti nivritti means that which you need to avoid pravritti means that which you need to do if you it is not enough if you avoid the negative things you have to do the positive things otherwise also he says you are negative only it's a very high level which he is throwing to us it's a kind of a challenge which he is throwing the e- the ego reacts to the challenge you know this is a way by which he is triggering the internal forces within us so that our own ego starts working for our benefit see this is the greatness of these masters they don't waste their energies in martial arts this principle is followed when a person comes to hit you a real martial artist one who was a master you know in that field now he will not uh, waste his time blocking or counter punching all these things they'll not do they will simply just step aside supposing the person comes to it they'll just move slightly back so that the punch goes here 
they will not waste their energies and once the person uh, you know a person's hand goes past them they will just use the same force and pull that person this side the f- the force with which that person is trying to attack him he uses it for his advantage and makes him fall this is how an advanced martial artist functions a person who is initially learning martial arts will want to fight will want to quarrel a person who wants to quarrel a person who claims that i know martial arts and he picks up a quarrel with anybody and everybody it means he is uh, he is not become mature he is still in the initial stages only as you learn that art all aggression the fighting tendencies will go away so at a very advanced stage they only want to conserve their energies so that that is what he is doing here okay what is your block ego right so uh, he is directly attacking the ego so that you know it starts uh, uh, getting hurt and it will start doing whatever he is asking you to do so this is a method which many masters adopt when they see a student struggling when they see that a student is caught up with something and the student says i cannot do this i can then they throw a challenge to the ego many a times you can't do this even this you can't do something like that they may say in that tone you know so immediately the ego gets hurt no i i will prove i can do it so it is using the opponent's force to here it is not to defeat in martial arts is defeat here it is using the students force to uh, that is the op- uh, the opposing force of the student to uplift the student because a true master has no aim except uplifting the student because he is full of love he is full of unconditional love why would he want to hurt just think he neither wants to hurt nor does he want any praises all that is not required his only focus is on how to uplift so this is a, a very interesting method so incidentally you can apply this principle in your life wherever you are finding that you are stuck you are getting stuck a particular habit you want to overcome it but you feel i am not able to do it there is nothing like i am not able to do it it's an it's a creation of the mind only at that time how should you uh, conquer that one method is throw yourself a challenge give a pep talk to your own mind you can't even do this you are so foolish are you at that level hey that person is doing this but everybody is doing you can't even do this so when you throw a challenge to your mind the ego will start reacting it will say why can't i do it i will do it and show when that happens thereafter the the role is over you you need to slowly <laughs> work on uh, sidelining the ego but this throwing a challenge helps a person who is caught up in tamas now if uh, throughout the bhagavad gita krishna will be throwing various challenges to arjuna in the second chapter the very first um uh lines which krishna utters that's what he uh, the, 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 that is the style he throws a challenge at arjuna kutastva kashmalamitam vishame samupastitam how can you fall into this state 
a state of weakness, Arjuna. This is unbecoming of you. Klaibhyam Masmagama Partha. Don't yield to cowardice. Come on, get up. It's a challenge which Krishna throws to Arjuna because the Kshatriya element in him will be awakened. Everybody has this, these tendencies within, you know. So you can, when, whenever such principles come, I am taking some time and explaining that to you so that you can start using the same principles to get your mind out of certain habits where you are stuck. Many people who, who are addicts, who become addicted to alcohol or drugs and all that, they get into this feeling, oh, I cannot do this. It's not only applicable at the extreme level. Even when you are functioning in life, there are many places where you feel, that's it. I, I cannot do more. So, in the earlier verse, we saw Shreya, good, better, best, always um, uh, strive for perfection. Now, in this verse, he is giving you one technique by which you can actually practice that principle of Shreya. Whenever you lack motivation, motivation to do something which is beneficial for you, immediately throw a challenge to your mind. It will work. I have seen that uh, work, I have seen this work uh, with many people. Some of the toughest things, that is what that person thought as very tough, he, he, he was able to achieve it very easily later on. It's just that the mind gets conditioned by certain factors. So, nourished by sacrifice, will the gods will give you the desired enjoyments. One who enjoys what is given by them without offering anything in return is indeed a thief. So, in this verse and in the next verse, that is this verse, the second line, and then the when we go to verse number 13 also, we will see, he is going to give you three different approaches in Yajna, out of which two approaches are wrong approaches. Here he is giving the worst approach possible. And then in the next verse, he will give you the mediocre approach. That is also That will also not help. And then he will also give you what is the best approach. So, we are going to make a thorough study of all these three approaches because all these three are there within you. Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. So, here he is talking about Tamasic tendency. One who wants to get all the benefits but does not want to contribute, that person is very Tamasic. Or we can say that quality is Tamasic. So, everyone is composed of these three gunas, qualities. The Tamo guna, the Rajo guna and the Sattva guna. Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. Tamas is the lowest. Rajas is mediocre. Sattva is the highest. So, Yajna is meant to to remove all your tamas and purify your rajas and promote the sattvic quality within you. And then it takes you beyond the three gunas. That state is that state of infinite. And when a person rises beyond the three gunas, he is called Gunatita. Guna Atita means one who has transcended 
the three gunas. Astita pragnya is one who has gone beyond the three gunas. So he is starting from the lowest here. And when he is dealing with tamas, you can see almost a, a sense of harshness when he says, Saha eva stena. He is indeed a thief, he says. Now, why is he using such a harsh language when uh, Lord Krishna is full of love and affection? Why should he use such a harsh language? Because tamas can, has to be dealt with only by force, forcefully. If you are very soft in dealing with tamasic qualities, it will never work. Tamas fundamentally means sleep, laziness. You cannot overcome laziness uh, or these kinds of extreme. See, this is nothing but laziness, basic laziness in life. Wanting all the benefits but not wanting to contribute. So that cannot be conquered in a soft way. You will have to deal with it in a harsh way. So per se, all the yogis, all the masters had unconditional love. But whenever they deal with tamas, they become uh, harsh. In the sense, they use the harsh approach because that alone can pulverize the tamasic energy which is present in a student. That is also done only for the benefit of that person. Supposing the house is on fire and a person is happily sleeping. Generally we say when a person is asleep don't go and disturb. But in this case the house is on fire and this person is not aware. He is just happily sleeping. Will you go to him and follow all the manners? Let me in a very gentle way, wake him, make, wake, wake, the, wake him up. Excuse me, excuse me. The house is on fire. Will you say like that? You will just rudely awaken the person. Even though it is rude and general, in this context, you are doing it for the good of the other person. That is the approach which he is taking here. So, it is the same approach which Adi Shankara also took. In the Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam Bhaja Modamate, he said. Oh foolish person, oh foolish one, oh ignorant one. Strong word, you know, Modaha. Modaha is a very strong word. He uses that. Why? Does it mean he wants to criticize everyone? No. He, uh, the, he, he wants to awaken humanity from its spiritual slumber, spiritual tamas. Therefore, he says, Moodamate, rudely, you know, that you will be awakened. That is the whole idea. So, as you are reading this verse, you should absorb that energy which is being given by Lord Krishna here. That is the energy of harshness. It looks like harshness, but it's actually the energy of love. And that, that love is coming in the form of harshness to attack the tamas within you. So if you just absorb the energy, for argument's sake, you don't understand anything of this verse, even as we go deeper into it. If you just absorb the energy, one who enjoys what is given by them without offering anything in return is indeed a thief. If you absorb the energy in the truest sense of the term, that is the energy of love but the approach of harshness, then all your tamas will get pulverized. It can happen in a moment. It all depends upon one's level of devotion, surrender and receptivity, you know. When a master is using this kind of harsh energy to a student, that is the best chance. If the student surrenders and absorbs, he will immediately come out of those blocks. 
But if he starts analyzing, oh, why is my guru so harsh to me? Why is he insulting me? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? Then the student is losing the focus. The benefit will not be obtained by him or her. So, one who enjoys what is given by them without offering anything in return is indeed a thief. I want you to absorb the harshness but feel the unconditional love behind it. See, remember one thing. In life, there is nothing called punishment. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it's so beautifully explained. He says, God blesses. It is always a blessing only. Sometimes, when a person goes in the wrong path, he says, God corrects. He doesn't use the word punishment. In some other context, we may use the word punishment, but it actually does not mean punishment. Correction is the correct principle. For whose benefit? For the person's benefit. For the other person's benefit. So remember this. It's a common misconception which people have. You know, I don't know why God is punishing me. No. There is something wrong in your energy pattern. And that, ener that energy pattern is being corrected, is being set right. But if you are judgmental, you will call it as punishment. God is full of love, infinite, unconditional love, that universal grace. The state of divinity is nothing but a continuous, spontaneous outpouring of blessings, nothing else. And when a person gets attuned to the infinite, he becomes a master. From a world, uh, from an external sense, we call such a person a master. No? So he starts blessing continuously. But that blessing can take the form of correction sometimes, which may be misinterpreted as punishment or harshness and all that. But it is not. Go, go to the depth of it. You should develop that subtlety. So, that is another application of this principle. Whenever you face any difficulties in life, don't see them as difficulties. See them as experiences which are coming to you to correct certain things. You have to learn the lessons, the right lessons of life. But what you do is, you take the stance, I am right, now why is this happening to me? The moment you take that stance, you will grow, you're clo you, you will stop growing. You, you, you are closing all the chances of growth. So, take all difficulties not as a curse, but as blessings in disguise. So, once you get into this spirit, if good things happen, you keep thanking. You are in a mode of gratitude. If so-called negative things happen, then also you say thank you, because correction is happening. If the guru is very sweet to you, you say, thank you so much, sir. The guru is harsh to you. Why are you doing this? Again, you thank. Because if a guru doesn't correct a student, who will correct the student? Tell me. So your whole life will become so wonderful. You are always in the mode of gratitude. And you will keep on learning your lessons in life and your growth will be expedited. 
it is only a question of time before all your impurities are uh, you know will all be purged out so when uh, when the tendencies are tamasic a particular treatment is given when the tendencies are rajasic different other kinds of treatments are given when the tendencies are sattvic again the guru gives a different kind of treatment so different kinds of treatment but the goal is one so when you read such verses where such strong words are being used like stena thief and all that now generally the tendency is to skip these and go away because you are unable to take it no you should pause there you should pause and absorb the energy of love which is coming in the disguise of harshness so you can take it up as homework two homeworks i'm giving you one is wherever your mind is stuck you are unable to get out of a situation you are unable to get out of a habit you feel oh i am not able to do that throw yourself a challenge take up the challenge take it up as a challenge and do it and show it is rajas only but it is uh, good for you because it it helps you to come out of the tamasic state let's say you have never exercise or you have stopped exercising for a long time you are any you feel oh even if i walk a little bit i am getting tired oh my leg is paining oh this is paining i am unable to do it take it up as a challenge and do it within a few weeks few uh, you know uh, within a few weeks you will find that your body starts building that rhythm don't expect an immediate result oh i am unable to uh, uh, wake up in the morning i am unable to sleep in the night take it up as a challenge start putting yourself effort it's only a question of time when you neutralize the past which you have created then you will form a new habit but till that time you should keep your efforts going so this is your first homework locate some area where you are stuck and use this challenge method the second practice is more subtle whatever you are facing in life take it as a blessing as an expression of the unconditional love of god of the infinite when good things are happening to you it will be very easy to practice but when some unpleasant thing is happening to you that is where it becomes more subtle more difficult to practice yet uh, yet it can be practiced not that it can't be now instead of seeing it as a difficulty instead of seeing it as uh, something which is being denied to you now seeing it uh, start seeing it as a same blessing but the blessing is come in another form i have to learn my lesson so ask yourself ask yourself what is it that i need to learn from this and you will be amazed because the so called negative experience will cease to be a negative experience for you you will come out more purified you will come out more strong you know one doctor he is an orthopedist he told me that uh, when a person has a fall and let's say there's a fracture and then they put the they you know tie the bones together and when it regrows when it gets healed what he said was something interesting the fractured arm which heals is more strong than the original one that is the potential so when you face a difficulty and come out of it 
actually you have the potential to become more strong but today you are hardly using it that way you are only getting into the state of complaint so this is the second homework two homeworks i have given you <laughs> and this is not for just for today this is for your life So you start this, the, both these practices and see what kind of effect it has in your life. You will completely stop complaining. Any experience which comes to you, you will start using it for your betterment. That is the beauty. Okay. So we will stop with that here we have seen the general translation and uh, I have given you a few tips to absorb the energy of this verse that is so important without that if we straight away get into it you will feel oh he is criticizing so much uh, a judgmental person will see this as criticism so you, your mind will not absorb it, rather it will try to avoid it and move to the other points. Whereas when you absorb the energy of love which is there in this verse, the energy of correction, that is when you can absorb it fully and it will help you to set things right within yourself. Okay, so next week we will uh, go further into this verse. We will see what are the different messages which we are getting. Not only this verse, verse 12 and 13 uh, have uh, the same theme. It, it, 13 is just a continuation of 12. That is the second, the second line he starts with tamasic approach and then in 13 he just continues there. He will be giving you the other two approaches, the sattvic and the rajasic also. And it will be so interesting uh, when we come, when we go deep into those portions, we will see. So before we do the uh, Nididhyasana uh, meditation today, uh, I will answer a few questions it is which have been asked regarding the 22 day empowerment course which is going to start tomorrow on attracting abundance. Now I am not reading the individual questions I am just straight away giving you the points uh, so this will answer all the questions which have been sent the this particular empowerment the energy of abundance uh, the, the uh, when we talk of attracting abundance we, we are trying to invoke the energy of abundance now this is not restricted to wealth alone material wealth alone actually see one person has asked Sir, uh, if I have a financial difficulty, will that get solved? The answer is yes. But you don't need to narrow down the whole thing to that. As I told you, these are all fringe benefits. When we talk of abundance, that is the energy of abundance at all levels. Whether it is finance, whether it is relationships, whether it is work, your spiritual growth, everything. So, we will be awakening the Shri Shakti, the energy of abundance at the cosmic level, at the external level, at the internal level. Different empowerments are going to be given to you. So, it is, don't consider it as one empowerment course, the two pertaining to one small aspect. No. Multiple empowerments are going to be given every day. 
and when you receive those empowerments you will go into a very deep state this is number 1 the other question which has been asked is sir i am new to this i have just started the yoga sankirtan sadhana now will i be able to really receive the empowerment energy this has been asked by a few people in different ways they have asked the same question only that is basically i am new now understand one thing when you say i am new you are only talking of this birth do you know all your past births if you know them you will not say you are new this is a very old connection the connection has been revived today or two days back maybe but the connection is right from your past births so there is nothing like new or old in this i know many people who have come for the first time and they benefited so much so remember one thing the fact that you are coming across this that opportunity is being given to you itself means you are ready for that thereafter it is your choice only unless you choose to get into it you will not benefit but the fact that that opportunity is being given to you by the infinite itself means it is meant for you you can handle the energy and one more thing is once you come for an empowerment you just surrender to the higher shakti and the guru shakti there is nothing for you to do see that feeling of i am doing can i receive it maybe i cannot receive it. all these are also different forms of the same ego only who are we to do anything we just surrender to the higher shakti and simply go along with the course go along with the sadhana automatically the higher meditation will happen see even during the shri hanuma dhyana that was not an empowerment session it was a healing session many people uh, sent mail saying that sir i have never sat even for 2 3 minutes in my life quietly and we i was wondering how is it possible will i be able to sit through but 3 hours i just sat through and when the thing ended i wanted more of it so many people had sent mails along the same lines you know why because of the higher grace so the empowerment session is going to be more powerful so you really don't need to worry about whether you can take it or not the question is what is it that you want i want to develop spiritually i want to attract abundance into my life if that is what you want just simply do it go through the course as simple as that simplify the process now also there have been many questions which have been asked about uh, do we need to practice something special and come for the courses and all that nothing special uh, anyway when you uh, register and they 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 would have sent you the the instructions you know so you just follow that that is you uh, sleep on time and wake up on time so that you are fresh similarly uh, do some kinds of stretches some ka- some stretches could either be yogasanas or stretches do some walking or some form of exercises because when you are doing intense sadhana that physical activity will help but don't overdo that also similarly don't don't attend the course uh, when your stomach is full immediately as soon as you have your food you are coming and sitting in for the empowerment the don't do that so that's why the best time which is suggested is early in the morning i have kept it at 5 am in the morning only for that purpose so people in india 
have no reason to skip that time even people who are in other time zones you can time it accordingly i think it's going to be kept for 20 hours or so so one is you will be attending the program so don't think it is only for those 2 hours or 2 and a half hours it's not like that whole day in the background a powerful empowerment healing is going to be given to you so every day some principles will be given deep sadhana deep meditation will be done multiple empowerments will be given and then some homework also will be given wherever it's required and the healing also in the background so so much is going to be given to you and what should you do just get into the train and relax in a relaxed frame of mind without any uh, blocks simply receive receive the higher grace that's all the rest will be taken care of by the higher shakti okay so one more thing is see when is since you're going to attend the course uh, a word of caution that is a lot of good things will start happening to you you'll start attracting abundance from all quarters so when that happens always be very humble maintain the humility that's what we we have been seeing here you know the gods will give you the desired enjoyment it's god given we always attribute it to the higher so use it for the benefit of yourself and for the benefit of others okay so uh, now we'll do the nididhyasana meditation this is also a preparation for you to get on with the course in a more smooth way gently close your eyes do deep breathing with every breath i am getting into a state of deep relaxation feel the divine vibrations
with every breath i am going deeper and deeper into myself beyond my body beyond my pranas beyond my emotions beyond my thoughts lies my higher self my higher self is infinite and divine I am fully attuned to that infinite consciousness I am swayam prakashit self illuminating offer your gratitude to god supreme
offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters slowly come back wriggle your fingers your toes rub your palms together to create a warmth cup your eyes with your palms gently rub your eyes your cheeks forehead top of the head back of the head and neck slowly open your eyes Welcome back. It's a very powerful session we had today. Even the Nididhyasana meditation was very powerful through this you are being prepared for the empowerment course attracting abundance which is going to start tomorrow so take this course as a secret course because when you absorb the energy of abundance through sadhana and you get those empowerments what will happen is you will be able to complete your worldly experiences in a spiritual way you will be able to attract whatever it is that you want from the world but you will be established in the higher spiritual energy to come with a very pure bhavana if your bhavana is impure that is not good that that will prevent you from absorbing the higher energy so write down all your goals because the energy of abundance will help in goal manifestation so many positive things are going to happen in your life but our real aim is to move towards that infinite so in that light this 
साइंस दिस एम्पावरमेंट कोर्स विल बी रिवील टू यू ओके आई थिंक द अदर डिटेल्स हैव ऑलरेडी बीन गिवन टू यू द टाइम द फोर पार्ट्स आई थिंक एवरी संडे इज अ रेस्ट डे फॉर द कोर्स बट देन वील वी आर गोइंग टू हैव दिस सेशन and uh, by the end of the course the time and date for you to submit your questions also will be given for the 22nd day which will be a question answer session and also the final concluding uh meditation and balancing of all energies will be done that healing will be given okay so thank you very much i'll see you all tomorrow in the empowerment course hari om